Welcome back to Precalculus. Today we're going to do some properties of real numbers. So we're going to look at some addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, as well as how to expand polynomials or other expressions. So what can we do with real numbers? Well, we can add them. So if we have a number a and b, we can do a plus b. We can subtract, so we can say a minus b. We can multiply and say a times b, but this convention or this notation, uh, we don't usually use the cross for the multiplication. What we do is we either use a dot for a times b, or we just write a b. So if we have, say, 3 times x, we would write that as 3x, just as convention. And for division, we can do a divided by b, so that's a normal sign you'd see in elementary school or middle school, but we will always use a over b for division because anything that is division is really just a fraction, so we'll just leave it like that. So here's some questions we're going to answer here. Does order matter when we do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division? And what can we do to simplify or expand an expression? Since those are two pretty important things that you're going to see way later in mathematics and prove some properties. But we're not going to prove anything. We're just going to say, hey, they exist and we can use them. So we have three properties here. You don't have to learn the names, but I think it's really good too because in discrete math you'll come across this some more and in later mathematics. It's good to know these names. So one is the commutative property, and that means that we can switch the order of how we do things. So if we have a plus b, then really what we have is b plus a. The order doesn't matter here. And we can prove that with an example, 3 plus 5 is equal to 5 plus 3. Well, 3 plus 5 is 8, and 5 plus 3 is 8. So yeah, this is good. Another thing we can do with the commutative property is we can use it with multiplication. So a times b is going to be the same thing as b times a. So here we have 3 times 5 is equal to 5 times 3. So 15 is equal to 15. So we're good here. But here's a question. We know we can do it for addition and multiplication, but what about subtraction? Is a minus b the same thing as b minus a? And the answer here is no, it's not, which we'll see next video with negative numbers how they work. And is a divided by b the same thing as b divided by a? And of course not, because then we could say that 3 is equal to 1 third, and that would just be crazy. So no, it only works for addition and multiplication. So that's the commutative property, where we just switch the order around. The second property is the associative property. And what this is, is how we group terms together. So for instance, if we have a plus b plus c, if we group a and b first, so we do a plus b, and then we add c, this is the same as doing b plus c first and then adding a. Similarly, with multiplication, if we have a times b and then multiply it by c, this is equal to a times b times c. So we do b times c first and then we multiply by a, and it's exactly the same. So again, addition and multiplication, these are good. All right. In fact, I, I encourage you with the associative property to check uh, division and to check subtraction for yourself because it might be interesting to check to see if these work and if addition works and multiplication works for just grouping terms in order, then perhaps they might work for division and subtraction as well. Hint, they do. Okay, 
And finally, the big one, which most of you are probably here for, is the distributive property. And this is expanding terms. So what happens when we have a addition and multiplication in the same problem? So for instance, we have a times b plus c. Well, what we do is we distribute the a in. So we distribute a to the b and we distribute a to the c. So what we get is ab plus ac. So let's do a nice example here. Three times, I'm gonna write out the sign here, four plus three. So here's what we do in this case. We take this three times and then we send it to the four and then we take the three times and then we send it to the three. So what we get here is we get three times four and then we add three times three because we do three times four and then we add three times three because we distributed the three into the brackets. So this is going to be 12 plus nine, which is 21. So that's the distributive property. And this works when you have a plus and a multiplication somewhere. So if these are all the same signs, we could just group things together. But because we always have to do our brackets first and then multiply, we have to be able to distribute things nicely. And we'll see this in set theory, in discrete mathematics, and definitely in other areas of operations as well. So we'll do some more examples here. In fact, we're going to start using variables now because, well, let's take a look at this previous example. 3 times 4 plus 3. Why would I ever do that? Why not simplify and just say 3 times 7? And then we can say, yeah, that's 21. That makes much more sense just to do the addition first and then multiply. Why would you distribute otherwise? Well, when we have variables, we have to. So here we have 4 times x plus y. So we distribute the 4 to the x, and then we add the 4 distributed to the y. So this is going to be 4 times x plus 4 times y. And that's all we had to do. Now this time, we have a variable 5x on the outside. So we have to distribute that 5x to the x, then we have to distribute that 5x to the y. So what we get is 5x times x plus 5x times y. And we just simplify this to 5x squared plus 5xy. So I should note here, if we have x squared, for those of you who might have forgotten, x squared is just the same thing as x times x. There are two x's, so we say this is x squared. And when we have two variables and we multiply them together, we just multiply them together. So if we have x times y times z squared, this is just the same thing as x, y, z squared. So those are very quick and dirty introduction to variables and exponents. But we'll get to that way more in detail in a future video. Um, so here's where you get a little bit more complicated. Because now instead of doing one term into two terms, we now have a two term multiplied by a two term. So in middle school, you might have learned FOIL, which is first, outer, inner, last. Or if your teachers didn't like English acronyms, they might have said FIO or Philo or Olaf. I don't know. Sounds kind of cool. But we're going to take a more logical approach. So here's what we're going to do. We can do this two ways. We can just straight up say, okay, we're going to take the 7x, distribute it to the 5y and the negative 2, and then we'll take the 3 and distribute it to the 5y and the negative 2, or we can break things up and we can say, okay, we're going to distribute this 7x to the whole bracket. 
So this is going to be 7x times 5y minus 2. And then because we have this plus sign here, we're going to add, and then we're going to distribute this 3 to the 5y and the negative 2. So this will be 3 times 5y minus 2. And we could do it like that. So then when we expand, we're going to get 35xy minus 14x, since we did 7x times 5y is 35xy, 7x times negative 2 is negative 14x, plus 3 times 5y is going to be 15y, 3 times negative 2 is going to be negative 6, so then we'll get this expression. But if we want, and here's the other way we can do it, we can say, okay, what is 7x times 5y? Okay, that's 35xy. What is 7x times negative 2? That's negative 14x. Okay, now we'll do the next term. What's 3 times 5y? That's positive 15y. What's 3 times negative 2? That's negative 6. And then we get the same answer. So we just sort of did the second step mentally. So that is more of a formal way of showing the distributive property, while this quick way is just distributing each term to each other term. So let's do this again, but let's do this the quick way for the next example. Okay, so we have 2 plus 3x plus y times w plus 3z. So we're going to take this 2 and distribute it to the w, then distribute it to the 3z. So we're going to get 2 times w is 2w, plus 2 times 3z is 6z. Okay, so now the 2 is done. So let's move on to the positive 3. So positive 3x times w is equal to 3xw. Positive 3x times positive 3z is equal to 9xz. Okay, now we're done with the 3x. So positive y times w is positive yw, and positive y times 3z is going to be 3yz. And there you have it. That's the full expansion of these two polynomials. So we could do it like we did before and break it up and say, okay, this is going to be 2 times w plus 3z plus 3x times w plus 3z plus y times w plus 3z. And then we could expand from there. But it takes a little bit of time to write it out, and we're essentially doing the same thing. So, why, why did they introduce the term FOIL to you in elementary school? Well, most likely to keep track of what you've already done. But I think now you're old enough that you can think and say, okay, the 7x has to go into everything. Okay, then we're done 7x, now we go to 3, now it goes to everything. So hopefully you can get that by now. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I can clarify a couple things if there's a tricky problem. Okay, so now that we've looked at the properties, done some expansions, let's do some practice questions. In this question... I want you to look at each of these and just tell me which of the three properties we used here. Just give me the name and I'll be back in a second. Okay, hopefully you had some time to do that. Um, in the first one we have 2 times x plus y is equal to x plus y times 2. Well, all we did is flip the order around. So this is going to be the commutative property because when you take the commutative properly, property, you just flip the order around. What about this 7 times s plus t is equal to 7s plus 7t? Well, this just looks like the distribution property, or the distributive property. So they just distributed them. Now, what about this third one? Well, again, we just put w to x and z, and then c to x and z. So once again, this is just the distributive property except we've extended it just a little bit. We've said, okay, 
here's what we had before. Let's just do it with two values instead of one. So those are the three properties. And now let's do some expansions. So let's simplify the following. Give you a second to do it. You can pause the video and come back. Okay, hopefully you had some time there. If not, well, cheating. Stop cheating, man. You're not going to learn if you cheat. No, I'm just kidding. You do what you want. In the first one here, we have 8 times 2k. Well, 8 times 2 is 16, and 8 times k is just k. I shouldn't have said that. 8 times 2k is just 16k. Okay. 3x times x plus 2. Well, we take this 3x and we send it off to the x, so that's going to be 3x times x, which we know is just the same thing as saying x squared, plus 3x times 2, which is just going to be 6x. Okay, now what about this last one here? We have 311 minus 310 times 430x squared minus 713y to the 9. Okay, this could be difficult, or we could realize that 311 minus 310 is just 1. And what's 1 times anything? Well, the remaining bit is just going to be 430x squared minus 713y to the 9. So, kind of tricky, because you might have said, okay, hold on a second. What's 311 times 430x squared? Then you would have got out your calculator, punched it all in, did some extra work, but we don't want you doing that. We want you taking the smart way out, so I gave you this little trick question just to make sure that you're uh, paying attention and not doing too much. So that was the properties of real numbers, expansion, which is the distributive property, grouping, which is the associative property, and switching orders, which is the commutative property. So make sure you understand when, when, when you can and can't use those. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Check out the website trevtutor.com or check out reddit.com slash r slash trevtutor if you want to ask some questions there. There's a much bigger community and other people can answer as well. So hopefully this helped. Hope to see you guys next time.